गोपीजन वल्लवा गिरीवर धारी गोपीजन वल्लवा गिरीवर धारी शोदन दन प्रजन रंजन जमुना तीरा चारी जमुना तीरा चारी जय राधा माधवा कुंज बिहारी जय राधा माधवा कुंज बिहारी गोपीयन वल्लवा गिरीवरदारी गोपीयन वल्लवा गिरीवरदारी यशोदन दन व्रजन रंजन यशोदन दन व्रजन रंजन यमुना तीरा वनाचारी जामुना तेरा वनाचारी जय राधा माधवा कुंज बिहारी जय राधा माधवा कुंज बिहारी जय ओम विष्णुपाद परम हम सा परिव्राय का शार्य स्त्रोत्र सात्र श्री श्रीमद ही से वाइंग रेस ऐसी भक्ति वेदांता स्वामी श्रीला प्रभुपाद की जाए ओम विष्णुपाद परम हम सा परिव्राय का शार्य स्त्रोत्र सात्र श्री श्रीमद ही से वाइंग रेस शिला भक्ति सिद्धांत सारस्वती लो स्वामी प्रभुपाद की जाए ग्रंथरा श्रीमद भागवतम की जाए ऑल ग्लोरियस टू दी असेंबल द वॉरिस ऑल ग्लोरियस टू दी असेंबल द वॉरिस ऑल ग्लोरियस टू दी असेंबल द वॉरिस ऑल ग्लोरियस टू श्री गुरु एंड श्री गौरांगा ऑल ग्लोरियस टू श्री लो प्रभुपाद ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय रीडिंग फ्रॉम श्रीमद भागवतम कांतो थ्री चैप्टर ट्वेंटी फर्स्ट टेक्स्ट फाइव रुचिर्जो भगवान् ब्राह्मण दक्षवा ब्राह्मणासुता जता ससार्जा भूतानि लद्धा भार्यम् चमानविम् रुचिर्जो भगवान् ब्राह्मण दक्षवा ब्रह्मना सुधा जता ससार्जा भूतानि लद्धा बार्यम् चमानविम् रुचिर्जो भगवन् ब्रह्मन् 
दक्षवा ब्रह्मना सुता जता ससाजा भूतानी लब्धा वार्यम चमानविम Shiryo Bhagavan Brahman Harshova Brahmana Sutaha Bhutani Nadva Varyam Chamana Vim Shiryo Bhagavan Brahman Yashwa Brahmana Sutaha Yadasa Sarja Chanavim Vaishnavis, please Shiryo Bhagavan Brahman Shiryo Bhagavan Brahman Dakshovan Brahmana Sutaha Yata Sasarja Bhutani Labdva Varyam Chamanavim Prashiryo Bhagavan Brahman Dakshova Brahmana Sutta Yata Sasarja Bhutani Labdha bharyam chamanavim Ruchi hi Ruchi Yaha Hu Bhagavan Worshipful Brahman O Holy Sage Dakshaha Daksha Va And Brahmanaha Of Lord Brahma Sutaha the sun <coughs> Jata in what way Sasarja generated Bhutani offspring Ladha after securing Baryam as their wives Cha and Manavim the daughters of Swayam Bhuva Manu <clears throat> Translation and purport by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Translation Oh Holy Sage, tell me how the worshipful Rushi and Daksha, the son of Brahma, generated children after securing as their wives the other two daughters of Swayambhuvamanu. Purport all the great personalities who increased the population in the beginning of the creation are called Prajapatis. Brahma is also known as Prajapati, as were some of his later sons. Swayambhuvamanu is also known as Prajapati, as is Daksha, another son of Brahma. Swayambhuva had two daughters, Akuti and Prasuti. Prajapati Rushi married Akuti and Daksha married Prasuti. These couples and their children produced immense numbers of children to populate the entire universe. Vidura's inquiry was, how did they beget the population in the beginning? <clears> Om <throat> Ajnana Timiram Dasya Jnana Jnana Shalakaya Shakshurun Militam Gena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Sri Chaitanya Manovistam Stapitam Jena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Gadamahyam Dadati Swapadam Tikham He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dinavando Yagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastate Tapta Kamchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vrishavanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vanchakalpa Taruvyesha Kripa Sindhu Pyaevacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavebhyo Namo Namaha 
श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदर हर श्रीवासादि गौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे अयानुलंबितौ यौवन खावद तम संकीर्तनाय कवितरव कमलाय तक्ष विश्वरो दुयवरो जुगधर्म फाल वंदे यगा प्रियक करुणावतार यम तस् प्रवेश मम वशम इमा प्रसुप्त संजीवया त्यकिल शक्तिधरा स्वदम न अन्याशहस्तरण श्रवणादि प्राणम नमो भगवते पुषा तोभ्यम ऋषिजो भगवान् भ्रमन दक्ष वा भ्रमण सुता जता सर्जा भूता लुहा बार्यम क्षमा वेम ओ होली सेच टोल मी हाउ द वर्शिप ऑफ ऋषि एंड दक्ष The son of Brahma generated children after securing of their wives, the other two daughters of Swayambhu Vamanu. <coughs> uh, Hare Krishna. Uh, before uh, starting, I would like to know who dressed the deities today, because uh, the deities look so marvelous. I will ask, you know, the uh, blessings of those devotees, because unless they have bhakti, how can they, you know, perform such a wonderful service? Uh, I was just looking at. Um, Uh, Rukmini Devi, and she looked like the final destination for all the beautiful things. And I was thinking that she is giving a class, a seminar, practical seminar of how the ladies should dress. <laughs> so Hare Krishna to all these devotees, wonderful service. <clears throat> so in the previous chapter, um, it was mentioned uh, that um, Lord Brahma was engaged in creation, and so many uh, things he created, uh, beginning with the. Um, five kind of ignorance and then he created uh, so many demons and uh, lusty demons and rapists and and chief demigods and uh, so many wonderful things vidyadaras gandharvas and finally um, he created um swayambhu manu and great sages and uh, and everyone else was very pleased after the uh, creation of especially swayambhu manu because he saw him Buddha man who was uh, teaching uh, the path of uh, regulations and, and, and laws for the human society uh, we have uh, uh, the, the manu samhita that prescribe many uh, activities and regulations uh, for the human society and also um, i remember i think it was prigupati prabhu who was quoting this verse from the bhagavad gita saha yagya praya shrishta puravasha praya patihi krishna says that in the beginning of the creation Uh, the lord of all creatures and sent forth generations of demigods and uh, uh, and then he gave them the process of sacrifice of yagna and by performing such uh, sacrifices they will attain all desirable things and then finally they will get liberation so <clears throat> excuse me and also in the oh, sometimes um, devotees ask especially you know in the very beginning of their devotional service uh, they start hearing that you know krishna is everything and everything comes from krishna so when we read these things uh, uh, generally the question may uh, be raised that why uh, sukadev goswami is speaking to parikshit maharaj about all these people like swayambhu manu and, and demons and lord brahma and you know let us go to the you know the the main topic which is like the rasa lila and krishna with the gopis and krishna tis in rukmini and all these different pastimes which is actually the the ultimate um um destination for all and goria um uh, madva sampradaya but it's good to know this for um there, there are several reasons why should uh learn about the lives of uh, these great uh, personalities like swayambhu manu and the prayapatis and we'll see uh, one of the reasons is that um they're all parts uh, plenary portions of portions of plenary portions of the lord uh, in the bhagavatam uh, there is a parivasa sutra or the verse that describe uh, uh, that they give meaning to the entire that's the meaning of parivasa sutra is that verse which gives meaning to the entire um um scripture the entire work and this is a very well known verse for all of us at the chamsa kala punsam krishna stu bhagavan swayam indriyari vyakulam lokam ridayanti yuge yuge that in previous verses uh, 
uh, Sute Goswami is mentioned in different incarnations of the Lord. You know, how he incarnates as, uh, you know, Varahadev and Kapila and all these uh, avatars. And then he said, but all these avatars are portions, uh, are plenary portions of portions of the plenary portion. But the Supreme Lord Krishna, he is Bhagavan. So, and in the previous verse, and I think it's in the 27, if I will remember, it is say, Rishayo Manavo Deva, Manuputra Mahau Yasa, Kala Sarve Hare Reva, Saprayapati Yasmritaha. That all these Rishayos, the Rishis, the Manus, the Devas, Rishayo Manavo Deva, Manuputra, Swayambhuva Manu and his descendants, they are all Kala Sarve Hare Reva. They are uh, plenary portions of myself, or portion of plenary portions, and kalahara sarve reva, sa prayapati yasmritava. This also includes the prayapati. So, uh, by uh, hearing about the lives of uh, all these uh, great personalities, we can also uh, learn about how to perform uh, devotion and service because they are all devotees. They are, they are part, uh, the plenary portions of the Lord. And also they are coming to do service, in this case, as uh, the demigods and great uh, prajapatis to populate the entire universe and to manage all the affairs that are going to occur in, uh, in the entire uh, creation. So this is one of the uh, reasons why we should not skip. Uh, because many devotees, they, uh, they do that when they see some chapter, these descendants of Manu, descendants of King, Keep it. This is not so important. No, this is very important. And also because sometimes, sometimes no, because these devotees, they engage in, in so many uh, wonderful activities and, you know, in the course of their activities, they teach us how to perform uh, devotional service and, and also they teach humankind how to, like, you know, set the path of, in, in this case, especially poverty Marga or the path of a material enjoyment. Because most of us, especially in this age of Kali Yuga, we, are, uh, we have to accept that we are attached uh, to material enjoyment. And all these uh, uh, prajapatis and, and, and Swayambhuva Manu, they are all householders and they teach human society how to engage properly in, in, in daily affairs in the material world. So they are empowered by the Lord, just, like the, just as the Kumara um, are empowered um, to teach transcendental knowledge, or Narad Moon is empowered to uh, teach the process of bhakti. So these great personalities, they, though they practice uh, bhakti, but they also uh, practice uh, this path of Pravriti Marga, engaging in, in, in fruitive activities, materialistic activities, with the aim of final liberation and attaining the service of the Lord. So. <coughs> So, um, by hearing, for example, uh, the pastimes of Daksha is one of the most uh, significant pastimes in, in, in the four count of the Bhagavatam because it teaches the importance of uh, not to commit offense against Vaishnava. As we all know, Daksha Maharaj, he was envious of Lord Shiva and he uh, offended him. And as a result, so many things actually happened in that uh, pastime. Both camps, you know, the Pans, the, the camp uh, uh, led by uh, Lord, Lord Shiva and um, the camp of the Brahmanas, they start cursing each other. And uh, as a result, so many, you know, people were affected. You know, one demigod, I think it was Pusha, he lost his teeth. Another, you know, Daksha Maharaj became the supreme personality of Godhead because he got a <laughs> head of a god. And then so many um, um, reactions came after that. But when he become purified, he offered uh, uh, obeisances to Lord Shiva. And this is a great teaching to all of us. Because in, in the course of our um, devotional practice, we definitely will commit offense against others. Even though if we you know, become humble or try to become humble and try to avoid offenses, we will commit offenses sometimes against uh, other devotees. Because we are struggling uh, in the most of nature. We condition souls. And then by reading and meditating upon the activities of these great personalities, we at least can learn 
how to, uh, at least we can understand what is, the, what is our destination <laughs> if we continue in the path of uh, uh, Vaishnava Parat. Yeah. Just like I, I learned a great lesson uh, a couple of months ago in Toronto. Was, uh, and we went to, with His Holiness Bhakti Marga Swami, uh, we were going to several programs, uh, especially on weekends, like two programs in a day. And, uh, you know, when you go to a program in, in the house of an Indian devotee, that means that there is a, like, you know, a short kirtan, short class, but there is a big prasadam. So, <laughs> and I'm not so uh, fond of eating too much. So in the first program we went one day, uh, it was one of my senior God brothers, uh, His Grace Bhakti Yoga Prabhu. And, uh, you know, we have a, like a very opulent prasadam and, and so many nice things. And uh, uh, <clears throat> it, it was a really wonderful program. And I, I ate a lot, actually, because I didn't have breakfast that day. And then I was full after some time. And then we had another program later. And so when we were driving to the second program, Maharaj asked me, Hey, Gangana, uh, are you ready for the second round? I said, Maharaj, definitely. I will commit offense against the Vaishnav, but I'm not going to eat because I'm full. And the devotee who was driving us, a very, very seri uh, senior devotee, he told me, listen, Prabhu, it's better that you eat and die than to commit Vaishnava Aparat. <laughs> and that was the entire trip, uh, you know, um, riding, was meditating on that. And finally, I realized that it's better to die, you know, to eat and die than not to eat and, and offend the Vaishnavas, because I don't want to be, I already committed so many offenses, so I don't want uh, one more. So, yeah, by uh, hearing these pastimes, we uh, learn uh, about how to perform devotional service properly. And also, uh, this personality, they are also being um, plenary portions of portions of the Lord. They are endowed with uh, transcendental qualities. Hmm? Unlike the materialists, that sometimes we think that the materialistic people, they are very, you know, they are very prominent and they are very great and they're you know, building empires. Like, just like I was thinking of uh, some days ago of uh, Suleiman uh, Sultan, who was the, uh, the emperor of the Ottoman Empire at the time of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And uh, we don't generally know this or speak about this, but actually he was the most powerful person in the entire planet in those days. Because the Ottoman Empire was the most powerful empire in those days. And uh, Suleiman, uh, he was a great, he's considered to be the greatest of all the sultans that, you know, have ruled in, in, in that um, empire. And he was a very uh, learned man, and he was a devotee of God. And he wrote several, uh, you know, poetry about glorifying God. And he was uh, um, the protector of all the subjects. Indeed, he was considered, he was known as the lawgiver, Suleiman, the, law, the lawgiver, because he would take care of, very nice of the praja, of the population. But... Uh, and, he, and he was, as I, as, I, as I was saying, he was a devotee of God. Actually, he used to say that he was considered to be, he considered himself to be the shadow of God on earth. You know, he would like very proudly, like, you know, in all his discourses, like saying, oh, I am Suleiman Ham, Allahum Jerju Sundeki Golgese, Jedi Iklimin Sultan, and this is Turkish, Ukshkatanum Padishaha, all these different things that he, I am the Sultan of all the, you know, seven seas, and I'm the Padishah, the, the supreme ruler of all these continents and all of that. But, you know, in my humble opinion, he was the most unfortunate person because in those days, Chaitanya Mahabrabhu was performing his passions and he didn't get any mercy from Chaitanya Mahabrabhu despite all, you know, his great qualities. So sometimes, generally, when we see people of this world and we, we get caught by their, or captivated by their qualities, but actually, you know, Bhagavatam says, Harawa Bhaktasya Kuto Mahatguna Mano Davato Bahihi. So they don't have any good quality because they're hovering in the mental platform. And who has uh, good qualities? The devotees. The devotees, they, all, they have transcendental qualities. So just like in the case of Daksha, we can learn uh, how, to, uh, how to be like humble after cursing a Vaishnava, how to like learn to bow down and give up our, our false ego 
And uh, let's say, for example, in another pastime here in the third canto, we just read it a few months ago, uh, uh, Diti and Kashyaba is another uh, very nice passing because Diti represents in this case our spirit of enjoyment. You know how um, sometimes we may think, you know, oh, I'm, I'm just a you know, really nice devotee. I'm not, you know, I'm a brahmachari or this or that. I'm not in the path of enjoyment. Yes, we come to the spiritual association or spiritual movement, and we also continue thinking that Guru and Vaishnavas are meant for our pleasure. And we start making arrangements of how to enjoy nicely in the association of devotees. And Diti represents this. And as a result, she also uh, offended Lord Shiva you know, by doing uh, sex with her husband in an in, in auspicious uh, time. And then what was the result? The Hiranyakashipu and Hiranyaksha were born. And what does uh, Hiranyaksha mean? He means, uh, Hiranya means gold. And Aksha means eyes, you know, he's golden eyes, which means that he's always looking where is money, where is money, where is money. So we develop that, men that mentality of enjoying, and then we become absorbed in, 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 in greed. Because Hiranyaksha is a metaphor, or uh, it represents also the uh, scientific or materialistic uh, mentality that we, we can exploit this planet or these resources of nature you know based on our own you know intelligence and endeavor and as a result there is a degradation of consciousness you know see he threw the earth down into the Garboda ocean and then Lord Baraha came which is a manifestation of the Vedic sacrifice and then he defeated um, Hiran Yaksha so, and we can see that nowadays in, in those countries or those places where science, materialistic science, has become very prominent when the priest, uh, when, when the scientists have become the priest, and where so-called Nobel Prizes have become the Mahayans, you know, the great authorities, we will see that in those places there is a degradation of consciousness. We can say it, it's, it's a practical. So, by, by reading and, and meditating upon these passions, we can uh, uh, develop all these uh, great qualities, like, like uh, um, one of the most important qualities we can learn from great sages and, and prayabadis and kings is vairagya or detachment. Because if, if we analyze the entire Bhagavatam, uh, many of the stories, kings were involved in, in, in those stories, you know, how they were kings in the beginning, enjoying all material opulence, but at last they gave up everything and they just went to the forest and to practice tapasya, austerity, sacrifices according to the, the age, you know, in some ages, the process of yoga um, uh, was uh, advised in another age, in Treta, uh, the process of sacrifice, then um, Diti worship in Dwarpa and Kalauta Dhari Kirtana, and the chanting of the holy name is advised as a sacrifice in this age of Kali Yuga. So they give up all this material opulence and they finally they went to take shelter of the Supreme Lord. And this is something very significant for us because many times most of us don't want to give up whatever we have. And Bhakti Yoga means that you have to become, well, that we have to become detached, especially from material enjoyment, want to speak of other things. And this is what Lord Chaitanya uh, came to teach by Ragya Vidya and Bhakti Yoga, Shikshakaneka, Purusha Purana, Sri Krishna Shaitanya Sarira Dari, Kripam Budirtam. What, what was the last? Yeah, that's, that's it. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to teach the path of Bhakti Yoga through the process of detachment and, and, and transcendental knowledge. So all these qualities, when we meditate on those pastimes, uh, we realize that. Uh, um, that I mean, when we meditate on those paths, and we can actually uh, acquire uh, those qualities, there are, as I say, many or the several reasons. Uh, just like, for example, uh, in the in the family of Swayam Bhuvaman, in a few verses before, in text number two, uh, they say that the two great sons of Swayam Bhuvaman, Priya Vrata and Uttama Pad, they rule the world. So in the family of these great kings, the Supreme Lord appeared. So that, also, these are not ordinary personalities because the Supreme Lord takes birth. 
It's like in the family of Uttanapad. Who was the son of Uttanapad? The prominent son? Dhruva Maharaj. So he, Dhruva Maharaj, he's, he's, he's glorified in the Bhagavatam. So, and then he had so many other descendants. He has uh, two sons. Uh, Tim was name was Utkala and Vatsara, and they, they had several sons and so many others, you know, descendants until they came to Maharaj Anga, who was the father of King Pritu, and Pritu, uh, sorry, of King Vena, and Vena was the father of King Pritu. So the Lord again appeared in the family of of Swayambhuva Manu, and in, in Priyavrata, this is describing the fifth canto. He had a son, Maharaj Agnidra, who was not a devotee. He was a materialistic, you know, materialistic minded person because he got attracted by uh, uh, Purvashiti and Apsara and then he performed sacrifice to go to the upper planetary system. But he had a son, Maharaj Navi, who was the father of Lord Rishabdev, another incarnation of the Lord. And Lord Rishabdev has so many uh, sons. The most prominent was Bharat Maharaj and the Nava Yogendras, and they all teach the path of Bhakti Yoga and, 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 and self-realization. So this is very important for us to uh, read and, uh, and, and study the lives and activities of these great personalities. Mm. And <coughs> I'm sorry. I'm just suffering some little bit of headache. Yes, um, yeah, so I am Bhuva Manu and, and, and he has these two um, sons, Priya Vrata. And I wanted to speak a little bit more about Priya Vrata, but we don't have that much time because he was another great uh, Prayapati. And, uh, but anyway, so uh, I will end the class right here because time is it's already over. So if there is any comment or um, questions or... Uh, yes, Prabhu, please. <coughs> The, the microphone is coming, bro. <clears throat> you just mentioned there is different reason. Yeah. I don't know how many, three, four, five. Why, why, why sh we should s study very carefully, you know, yeah. Hiroshima Bhagavatam be before we jump to, you know, Tetkanto. So you mentioned like two, you know, example for us, and you know, <clears throat> their quality. We can get it by reading about them. Uh, what else? Yeah, but also this is the way of uh, um, approaching a spiritual personality. We don't just jump into the esoteric passions. You see, I think it's in the fifth chapter when um, uh, when Vidura approached Maitreya, he, the first thing he asked, I think it's in the fifth chapter, I don't remember. That, uh, it's not in this book. The first thing he asked is, my Lord, I have seen that uh, people are in this world, they're endeavoring to become happy, but actually they are getting suffering. So he doesn't start, you know, asking, you know, what is Krishna doing in Vrindavan when he's alone with Radharani? You know, this is also the process that we have to learn because these are all bibhutis of the Lord. You know, they, they are all plenary portions of the Lord. So by uh, learning about the life, we also understand the greatness of God. And Prabhupada many times mentioned that we should not jump to the tenth canto and to read all the you know esoteric pastimes, because we have to understand the greatness of God first. Otherwise, we will take it for granted the activities of Krishna with the gopis, and we will imitate those activities. Yeah. Just like actually, I was Devarata and I. We met one person uh, in our last trip, and he, he was telling us how he, uh, in the beginning, because he was not taken so seriously, he thought that he could also perform some rasa dance. You know, so you can see. So, yeah, and then as a result, he suffered like anything by performing his so-called rasa dance. So, <laughs> so, yeah, there are several reasons, you know, as I was saying, but we don't have time to discuss all of them. But that is another reason that that is the process, you know. Also, when Prabhupada came, those were disciples of Prabhupada. They can, they can tell me or they can tell us better. Prabhupada didn't come speaking of, you know, cause like in the Govinda Lilamrita in the beginning, there is a description of... Uh, uh, the night passions of Krishna and Radharani, they're uh, undressed and uh, they're, you know, performing their passion. We cannot, you know, have access to that in our uh, condition and state. So the first nine cantos of Bhagavatam are meant to purify us from so many different anarthas that we have. Just like in this third canto, for example, with all these passions of uh, Hiranyakashipu, all these anarthas of greed, 
of uh, uh, being disrespectful or not being so humble. All these anarchists, they get uprooted. And then finally, when we enter into the realm of the Ten Canto, we'll be able to grasp something. So, yeah, there are so many things we can say about that, but, you know, time is, has become our enemy right now. <laughs> and the devotees are waiting for Mahaprasad going there. Anything else? Hare Krishna. Granta Raj, Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Vanchakal Patarubya Shakripa Sindhu Bhyai Vasha Patitanam Pavanevyo Vaishnavevyo Namo Namaha.